have a couple of students uh, learning the Chanson Triste by Tchaikovsky at the moment, which is another great study piece and, well, it's a great piece of music. It sounds great, but it has lots of interesting things in it to explore um, with uh, making things not the same, growing sound, uh, technical things, there's finger replacement using uh, different fingers for the same note, um, shifting around, shifting up to, oh, what do we get up to? Fifth, sixth position, um, some harmonic, um, need for using point of contact where the bridge bow is on between the fingerboard and the bridge to get the sound working the way one wants. Many things. And it's, it's, it's not too hard really. Okay, so first of all, students often don't know what key they're in, so it's a good idea to uh, ask them what key they think they're in. And uh, if they don't know, then they can of course work it out from the key signature, which they've been told to do. Right. Oh, also before starting, what part of the bow? Here, here, here. What will enable you to get the sound you want and be able to grow the sound and make it ebb and flow the way you want it? Okay, four or five notes in a row, all the same. Do we want them the same? No. example of finger replacement uh, for shifting around where we had fourth finger and then first finger chop it out practice that little bit on its own change the bowing together. on it. 
sein. Different bowings. Other way around. didn't go so well, what do you do? Go over it. of course. So I could have done that instead of the fingering I did the first time. Right, moving on. We get down again. And then a Got quite a big build up in there. So you have to get your bow moving closer to the bridge. cutting sound and with the underlying principle of course that left hand nearer the bridge, bow nearer the bridge. <laughs> couple of ways of doing a shift there from fourth position up to fifth position we have a sort of a classical shift where you use an, an auxiliary in between finger. So I go up on my first finger, then add the third finger, and then as you practice it, you can hide the auxiliary note. You could go up there from your second finger F, just a sort of more romantic shift straight up on your third finger. Practice both and decide what you like. Well, I'll do that again. Shifting up to the D on your first finger and adding the fourth finger. Which 
is the cleanest sort of shift there really or it may be you want to go up with a little bit of lead into the note <laughs> Okay, I'm going to do the classic. And this time we've got that same shift again up to the B flat. You could choose to have a little bit of third finger sliding sound in there either before the bow change or after the bow change, depending on what effect you want. It's the bow change is before I get to the destination note, which gives you one kind of effect, or you can change the bow once you get there. Different kind of effect, or you could have gone for the classical shift again and just ch tried to shape it slightly differently. Possibly I would go for the, just for variety, I might go for the uh, changing bow on a romantic shift before I get there. Maybe a little bit old fashioned, I don't know. Try all the different options and again decide what you like. Uh, where are we? Yeah. Finished with a down bow there. But I want to start with a down bow again on the next note. I don't want to make a big gap of, of retaking. So I use there a, a very handy little trick. I call it slipper bowing. So you slip the bow really fast to but not leaving the string totally. So within the vibration of the string, you get back to the part of the bow that you want to be in. And it's a very subtle way of keeping things connected um, where you might otherwise end up with a bit of a, a gap. as well. Oh, twice missed it. Now that time I had a gap, but I got nearer the note. So, worth talking about at this point. Um, if you miss a note, when you're practicing, it's better just to miss it and notice it rather than correcting it once you've started the note. So if I went... Ah, that would be practicing missing the note and changing it. But what I want to do is practice hitting the note. So I go... Let's miss it. Okay. Throw it away. Sharp. 
So it's a good idea also to identify um, when it's not right. Don't just think wrong. Think it's either sharp or flat. It's either on sharp or flat. There are only three options. <laughs> Pretty close. Pretty good, but the transition wants to go. So that's the sort of thing you work on. Replace. And when you do that replacement there. We don't want the sound to die completely. We want it a little spider's web connection, a little just a, a wisp of connection. Finishing off. Of course, you can play around with that ending a bit as well. You could go. If you wanted to, or some other combination within there, those last half a dozen bars.
many ways to finish off this.